So, let us prove the famous Hanbanak theorem. So, now that Okay, so famous Hanmanak theorem uh, which states that suppose you have a nonlinear space x and you take a subspace y, y is a subspace of x. Now, let A be a mapping which is sitting inside the dual space of Y. Okay. That means F is a functional from Y to the scalar field. Then, so for this F, you can find out another function which is a linear functional from on x such that the restriction of this map g to y will be f okay and norm of g will be the same as that of f so here x dash is the first dual space of x and y dash is the first dual space of y. Okay. So, the statement is that suppose you have a nonlinear space and you have taken a subspace y of x, then for any linear functional f on y can be extended to a linear functional on x with the property that it preserves the norm that is norm g is equal to the norm f. So, the norms will be same. Okay. And to prove this theorem, you need to consider one important lemma and first of all, suppose the proof can be split up, up to two cases and the first case will be proved by for the case for real vector space. Suppose x is a real vector space okay. and do, then we will apply the uh, proof to the next case which is for complex numbers. Suppose, if you take x to be a complex vector space, then you can prove the theorem by applying the procedures that has been proved uh, in a real case. So, x suppose the first case is x is a real vector space and now we have to establish one lemma which is like that. So, suppose x be a real vector space and uh, suppose you have a real nonlinear space okay. and y be a proper subspace, proper subspace of x. Okay. So, this is your x and suppose this is your y. Okay. Then, since y is a proper subspace and then you can find out one y naught in between in x which is not in y. So, and let y naught belongs to or you can do not take it y naught this is x naught 
because it is not in a y so we can regard this as x not belongs to x minus y okay so then if f belongs to y dash with suppose the norm has been taken as 1 then you can find out then then you can find out a linear functional on the subspace generated by y and x naught this one that is y plus this and g will be a linear functional on this space such that g if it will be restricted to y then we will get f with norm g is 1 that means here norm g and norm f are same so here y plus the y plus x naught is the subspace generated by y and x naught okay so this is the lemma that we need to establish to prove the above theorem okay so what is the techniques that we are going to apply so suppose uh, suppose you take any arbitrary points in y suppose you take y and y dash with two arbitrary points in capital y then since f is a linear functional so f y minus f y dash so it must be f of y minus y dash due to the property of linearity of f and since it is a real number so we must have this one will be less or equal to its modulus right okay and then since f is a bounded linear functional because it, because it is in the dual space of y so mod of f y minus y 2 y 1 uh, sorry y minus y minus y dash so this must be less or equal to norm f into norm of y minus y dash now since norm f is 1 so it is actually norm of y minus y dash okay and then this norm of y minus y dash must be less or equal to norm of uh, norm of x naught plus y plus norm of x naught plus y dash because you can take this as norm of uh, x naught plus y minus of x naught plus y dash right so this will be less or equal to this one so therefore this real number is less or equal to this one now we just so we will take this to the left side because it involves y and we will take this to the right side because it involves y dash so f y uh, yeah so yes okay 
so right so we will know no 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 uh, we shall okay okay Okay, so we shall take minus of f y dash minus norm of x not plus y dash. Less or equal to minus of f y plus this one. Okay, right. So we shall take this to the left side, and we shall take this to the right side. Okay. Okay. So this real number is less or equal to this one. Okay. Now you have chosen y and i y dash to be arbitrary. That means these are true for all y and y dash. So you can consider two sets. One is minus of f y minus norm of x not plus y since y dash is arbitrary so take y belongs to capital y and you can also take another set which is this one that is minus of f y plus norm of this one y to be in capital y and this set of reals they are bounded above Since they are less or equal, to, suppose you fix up one y here, and then you can prove that for any y dash, this is true. So these real numbers are bounded above by this one, right? In a similar way, if you take this set, then this is bounded below. So this is bounded below by if you fix up one y dash. Then these real numbers are less or equal to this this one. Okay, so that means since this set is non-empty bounded above set, so the supremum exists, and therefore, therefore, also you can in a similar way you can say that this one is a bound non-empty bounded below set. So therefore, it must have a have an infimum. So suppose, so let uh, let us suppose that capital A be the soup of all those reals. Uh, sorry. So y belongs to capital Y. And capital B be the infimum of all these reals, say minus f y plus norm of x not plus x. Okay, and therefore, with respect to this inequality, you can say that this A. So therefore, you will get A less or equal to B. Okay. Now let us choose. Let us choose one real. R belongs to this with in between A and B. Okay, so let us choose one real in between A and B. And now, with respect to this real number, let us define a map G from. The subspace generated by y and x naught to R by G of so the elements in this subspace will be of the form small y plus the multiples of scalar multiples of x naught. That means alpha x naught, right? So therefore, you can define this map as so G of y plus alpha x naught. 
is going to be equal to a phi plus lam uh, plus alpha r okay f y plus alpha r this r has been chosen in between a and b okay now we need to show that so g is linear why g is linear because if you take any two elements from this subspace suppose uh, g of suppose we take y plus alpha x naught plus y dash plus alpha dash x naught then it will be g of y plus y dash plus uh, alpha plus alpha dash x naught so, this is f of y plus y dash plus alpha plus alpha dash into r. So, that means f y plus alpha r and this will be f y dash plus alpha dash r. Since f is linear, so therefore, it is g of y plus alpha x naught and this will be g of y plus y dash plus alpha dash x naught. And in a similar way, you can show that if you take any uh, multiple. So, suppose you take alpha star of this one. So, then it will be g of alpha star y plus alpha star alpha x naught. So, then it will be f of alpha star y plus alpha star alpha r. Now, since f is linear, so you can take it out from this bracket. So, alpha star f y plus alpha star alpha r. So, therefore, you can take this out, take the common alpha dash uh, alpha star. So, it is f y plus alpha r. So, therefore, it is alpha star g of y plus alpha x naught. So, this proves that g is linear. Okay. So, G is a linear transformation from the subspace to R that means, it is a linear functional okay. and also if you can look at this map you will see that if you restrict this map to y then the points will be of the form y small y small y plus 0 x naught so that means, it is f y. So, on y on y g of small y equals to g of small y plus 0 x naught that means, f y plus 0 r. So, it is f y. So, that means, g equals to f on y that is g restricted to y is f. Okay. So, g is an extension of f from y to x. Okay. And since uh, g y equal to so on y g y equal to f y, so you can take the modulus uh, uh, okay, right. So, you can take the modulus mod of g y. So, that means, it is mod of f y and which must be less or equal to norm f norm y. Okay. Suppose 
No. I need to check that uh, whether it is bounded on the subspace because G has been defined on the subspace Y plus X not. Yes. But on Y, you can say that F Y equal to G Y, right? That means uh, mod of F Y is mod of G Y and if G is bounded, then it will be less or equal to norm G into norm Y if G is bounded, yes, if G is bounded. if g is bounded, but then it will imply that. So, since mod of f y is less or equal to norm g into norm y, norm y, so we can say that norm f must be less or equal to norm g, right. So, that means, so if g is bounded, then norm g must be greater or equal to norm f which is 1. So, if G is bounded, so if G is bounded, I do not know whether it is bounded or not, but if we suppose that G is bounded, then we must have norm G must be greater equal to 1. Okay. Now, now norm G less or equal to 1 if you assume that norm g less or equal to 1, when you can say this conclusion, suppose if you have if g of uh, mod of g of y plus alpha x naught is less or equal to norm of y plus alpha x naught, right, because g has been defined on the subspace. So, if this is true, then you can say that this norm g is less or equal to 1. Okay. If this is true, then you can say two things, one is g is bounded and another one is norm g is less or equal to 1, right, norm g is less or equal to 1, right. And this will be true if you could have proved that uh, um, yes, right. Okay, so if so, g of y plus this one means mod of f y plus alpha, right. So, this is less or equal to norm of right ok. Point. So, that means, so if, so this will be true if you can prove that if this one is true that is yes minus of norm of y plus alpha x naught is less or equal to f y plus alpha r right less or equal to norm of y plus alpha x naught right just using the uh, inequality this one because if you take suppose uh, norm x is less or equal to k so that means minus k less or equal to x less or equal to k right you are using this fact Okay. Okay. So now, if if you can prove that, so so minus of f y minus y plus alpha x naught is less or equal to alpha r 
less or equal to minus of f y plus norm of y plus alpha x naught, right. If you can prove this one, then this is true. And again, if uh, so for alpha not equal to 0, suppose you take the non zero scalars, then you can divide this, you can take the alpha inverse and multiply it with the vector, right, scalarly. So, minus of y. So, alpha inverse y minus of norm of uh, alpha inverse y plus this will be simply x naught and this is less or equal to r less or equal to minus of f of alpha inverse y plus norm of alpha inverse y plus x naught, right. Okay, if alpha is not equal to zero. Okay, so these numbers, uh, these uh, these are vectors in capital Y, right? Since capital Y is a subspace, but these real numbers are looking like the previous ones that has been stated above, right? and the right and the right uh, and the real numbers in right hand side are looking like these real numbers okay now since capital a and capital b are respectively the soup of these real numbers and uniform of these real numbers so particularly so if so so these are some particular num uh, particular vectors, uh, particular real numbers. So these real numbers are less or equal to R, less or equal to this one. So that means if you varies these vectors over y, then you will get. If you take the supremum of these real numbers, then it will be capital A, and it will be less or equal to R. Now again. If you take these real numbers and keep this y uh, just runs over capital Y, then you take the infimum and it will be B. So, if you take this R from A and B, then what you have written above that is norm G is less or equal to 1 that can be concluded. So, if you take these real numbers from A and B, then this is true. G is bounded and norm G is less or equal to 1. And, and here the case is that we have already chosen this small r from A and B. Okay. So, therefore, G is bounded and norm G less or equal to 1. And if G is bounded, then this is also true. So therefore, so therefore, so this proves the lemma, right? Okay. So how many extension that you can define? You can define uncountably many extension if A is strictly less than. Okay. So, the uh, existence of these extensions of f are not unique in general. Okay. So, therefore, you can make a corollary out of this lemma, which is actually, so for f belongs to y dashed, there exists g belongs to y plus subspace generated by y and x not and take the dual. So, there exists a g on in the dual space of this subspace such that 
g restricted to y will be f and norm g will be norm f. Okay. Okay. And you can complete the proof just by taking uh, just by considering two cases suppose one is norm f is 0 suppose it is true that norm f is 0 then define a map g of y plus alpha x naught is 0 for all y belongs to capital y and for all scalars alpha right if you consider this map then it will satisfy this property and if norm f is not equal to 0 okay now if it is not 0 then you take you just take the unit vector okay then it will be f and f f by norm f will be a map in the dual space of y and then by the above lemma then this is one and so there exists a g belongs to y plus x naught dashed such that g restricted to y will be f by norm f and norm g is one right norm g is one and then you choose you choose the map that means you can define the map h from y plus this to r by taking so h uh, suppose h x okay so suppose you take x belongs to this subspace so h x will be g x multiplied with the norm f then it is true that this h is in the again in the dual space of this subspace such that if you take the restriction then what you will get you will get f right and if you take the <coughs> norm then norm h is equal to norm f into norm g but norm g is 1 so it is equal to norm f right so this proves the corollary <coughs> okay now using this lemma we are going to attempt to prove this the main result that means to prove the anmanak theorem for the real case right for real vector spaces okay so <coughs> so to prove this theorem let us recall the jones lemma what is jones lemma these are one of the famous independent statement in the theory of sets nape set theory right jones lemma what is that sir every chain has a maximal element so in a every chain in a poset in a poset x less or equal to if every chain if every chain in x has a least upper bound right then 
x has a maximal element. Now, what do you mean by a chain? What do you mean by a chain in a poset? In a poset, two elements are comparable. Uh, so, suppose A is a subset of X then A is said to be a chain in X if for any two elements A A dash belongs to A then either A is less or equal to A dash or A dash is less or equal to A. मैक्सिमाल मैक्सिमल एलिमेंट व्हाट डज इट मीन बाय ए मैक्सिमल एलिमेंट इन ए पोसेट सेटाउ तो जानते हो बोलो माने कि मैक्सिमल एलिमेंट मीन maximal element if there exist if there exist no element small x belongs to x satisfying x not less or equal to x x not not equal to x if cannot find out any small x belongs to capital x so that x not is less or equal to x x not not equal to x then you can say that x not is a maximal element of capital x theek hai ja mane x not er theke mane er the greatest element thakbe na thakbe na मैक्सिमाम <coughs> ठीक What to do with this Jones lemma? 
so just look at the statement of jones lemma that is you need to have a poset so you need to construct a poset out of the statement that has been stated in hanmanak theorem so you need to construct a poset first then you need to check that if you take any chain in that poset then they should have a least upper bound and after that you can conclude that the poset that you have defined for proving hanmanak theorem they must have a maximal element okay. so let us define first so define a poset g or just take curly p as set of all functions g i should call it functionals linear functionals that belongs to the dual space of z dual space of z but what is z where z is a subspace z is a subspace of x z is a subspace of x such that y is a subset of z and g restricted to y will coincide with f and the norm g will be equal to norm f okay so you are considering the p the set of all those linear functionals that has been taken from the dual spaces of z where z is a subspace of x containing y such that if you restrict these functionals to y then it will give you f and norm g is equal to norm f okay so that is your set <coughs> okay now whenever you are defining a set that needs to be non empty so you need to check that whether this p curly p is non empty or not okay now it is true that curly p is <laughs> curly p is sorry this is non empty why as as because f itself a f is already to exist ache ekhane ekdom a f itself is in this one okay so curly p is a non empty set okay now after defining this curly p you need to make it a poset so let us define suppose we take g and g star belongs to curly p so define g less or equal to g star so you are defining a you define a relation on curly p such that this is true if and only if the domain of g must be a subset of domain of g star and if you restrict g star to domain of g then it will give you g okay so this is your relation that you have defined for the on the set curly p okay now with respect to this relation you can check that so this is up to you so you can check that check that this relation is a partial order relation
on curl degree ok. So, this is a poset, we have constructed a poset ok. Now, to apply Jones lemma you need to check that if you take any chain from this poset then they should have a list of our own ok. Then you can apply Jones lemma and you can conclude that this poset must have a maximal element ok. So, let <coughs> so let us consider a chain. in P less or equal to ok. So, let us consider a chain gamma ok. So, and now so in gamma the set of the functions that uh, that is in gamma you just take the domain of those functions that is inside in gamma and take the union that is union of domain of G, but G belongs to gamma ok. Just take the union of the domain of those linear functional that is inside in gamma ok. <coughs> Fine. Okay. So, this is, so the fact is that this is a subspace containing y, is it a subspace? Suppose you take any two points w, w dashed right. So, then this w belongs to some domain of g and w dash belongs to some domain of g dash right, where this g and g dash are from gamma and gamma is a chain. So, therefore, since gamma is a chain, so since gamma is a chain so, these maps are comparable. So, either g is either g is less or equal to g dash. So, either g is or g dash less or equal to g. Now, if you take any one of this, then you will see that. So, either domain of g is a subset of domain of g dash or domain of g dash is a subset of domain of g. So, in either case, so either w and w dash is in domain of g or in domain of g dash right. So, suppose you take that, so, so suppose you take w and w dash is in domain of g dash ok. So, therefore, so since these domains are subspaces that has been defined in P right. So, G is in the dual space of Z that means domain of G is Z. What is Z? Z is a subspace of X. So, therefore, these domains are subspaces of X containing Y. So, therefore, this implies so alpha W plus beta W dash belongs to domain of G dash and therefore, it is in it is a subset of W ok. So, therefore, W is a subspace of X containing Y right. Now, on W, so, so this implies W is a subspace of X such so that Y is a subset of W ok. Now, after defining this w, let us define 
a map on W. Suppose you take a G. Just take one. Suppose you take H from W to R by H x equals to. Now, since this x belongs to W, so it must be in some union, right. So, x must be in some domain of G. So, x must be in some domain of G for G belongs to gamma, right. Okay. So, we define this H x as G x. Now, one can say that if this x is in two domains of two functionals, suppose x is in domain of G and domain of G dash, then by the by applying the same argu arguments that has been stated above that is since gamma is a chain. So, these maps are comparable and then the domains will be a subset of the another. So, therefore, this x will be in some g right. Suppose, x is in domain of g and domain of g dash, then domain of g either is a subset of domain of g dash or it is a sub domain of g dash is a subset of domain of g. So, x either in domain of g or in domain of g dash ok. So, therefore, the map is well defined h is well defined. So, this is the fact. Okay. And if you take uh, the restriction of H to domain of G, then it will give you G, right. So, this is true for all G plus to comma. So, thus, so H is a linear functional on is a uh, so h is a uh, okay fine now the question is that so thus h belongs to w dash is it true Is it true? Is this true? That was it. That's what you know. The H that are three. Ah, bolo bolo. H that are linear functional. I mean, W is a W is a subspace. Yeah. W is a arithmetic mapping. That is to define. Could you tell me that? कन्स्ट्रकशन <laughs> একদম ওই ওখানে তো জি টাকে রেস্ট্রিক্ট করছি ওয়াই এ সমান হচ্ছে এফ নন জি কে নরমাল না জি টা কিন্তু আমরা নিচ্ছি জেড ড্যাশ থেকে তার মানে এখানে জি মানে এই যে এইচ টা নিছি এইচ টাকে এখানে থাকতে হবে এইটাকে প্রমাণ করতে হবে যে এইচ টা बाउंडेड হচ্ছে কিনা লিনিয়ার ফাংশনাল তো হলোই बाउंडेड লিনিয়ার ফাংশনাল হবে না হলে ডুয়াল স্পেসে তুমি রাখবে কি করে সেটা বলতে হয় ডুয়াল স্পেসে রাখতে গেলে তোমাকে बाउंडेड টা চেক করতে হবে 
তাহলে বাউন্ডারিটা কি করে হচ্ছে বাউন্ডারিটা তো ইজিলি ফলো করছে কারণ নর্ম অফ এইচ এক্স মড অফ এইচ এক্স তাহলে মড অফ এইচ এক্স মানে সাম মড অফ জি এক্স তাই না তার জিগুলো তো তুমি নিয়েছো জিগুলো কোথা থেকে নিয়েছো এই যে কার্লি পি থেকে নিয়েছো তো তার মানে জিগুলো অলরেডি সাম ডুয়েল স্পেসে রয়েছে समान তাহলে নর্ম এইচটাও তোমার নর্ম এফের সঙ্গে সমান হয়ে যাবে দেখো ঠিক আছে নাকি বুঝতে পারলে মানে যেহেতু এই যে তোমার এইচটা রেস্ট্রিকশন টু ডোমেন অফ জি ইস জি তাহলে আমি ইন ডোমেন অফ জি আমি ডোমেন অফ অন ডোমেন অফ জি তাহলে এইচ আর জিটা তো সেম ম্যাপ এইচ আর জি সেম ম্যাপ তার মানে অন ডোমেন অফ জি তার মানে মড অফ জি এক্স আর মড অফ এইচ এক্স একই হবে অন ডোমেন অফ জি কিন্তু আমি এইখানে নিজি তার মানে যেহেতু এইচটা বাউন্ডের আমরা অলরেডি প্রমাণ করে ফেলেছি তাহলে তুমি এখানে করতে পারো লেস অরিকল টু নর্ম এইচ ইন্টু নর্ম এক্স তার মানে নর্ম জিটা হয়ে গেল লেস অরিকল টু নর্ম এইচ আর অলরেডি তুমি প্রমাণ করেছো নর্ম এইচটা হচ্ছে লেস অরিকল টু নর্ম জি তো দেয়ার ফোর দে আর সেম এখন এই জিগুলো যেহেতু তুমি পি থেকে নিয়েছো তাহলে এদের নর্মগুলো কি নর্মগুলো হচ্ছে সবাই নর্ম এফের সঙ্গে সমান ঠিক আছে না সো এইচ বিলংস টু ডাব্লিউ ড্যাশ অ্যান্ড আর কি বলতে পারো না তুমি বলতে পারো যে তোমার কি বলে নম জি গুলো হচ্ছে নর্ম এফ এবং তারা সবাই নর্ম এইচ এর সঙ্গে সমান তাই তো অ্যান্ড অলসো এবার ডোমেন অফ এইচ ডোমেন অফ এইচটা কি ছিল ডবলিউ তো ডবলিউ কন্টেন্টস তো ডবলিউ কন্টেন্টস ইচ ডোমেন ফর অল জি বিলংস টু গ্রাম রাইট তার মানে ডোমেন অফ এইচটা ডোমেন অফ জি গুলোকে কন্টেন করছে নট অনলি দ্যাট এইচ ইজ রেস্ট্রিক্টেড টু ডোমেন অফ জি যদি হয় তাহলে সেটা জি হচ্ছে ফর অল জি বিলংস দিস তো দিস স্যাটিসফাইজ দ্য রিলেশন দ্যাট হ্যাজ বিন ডিফাইন্ড হিয়ার এই যে এখানে যে রিলেশনটা আমরা ডিফাইন করেছি দেখো ডোমেন অফ জিটা হচ্ছে লেস অফ হাফ সেট অফ দিস জি ড্যাশ যদি ডোমেন অফ জিটা রেস্ট্রিক্ট করি তাহলে জি হচ্ছে তার মানে এখানে আমরা বলতে পারি সো দিস ইমপ্লাইজ সো এভরি জি is less or equal to h for all g belongs to gamma tale amra ki bolte pari ekhan theke na h is an upper bound of gamma ebar eta list hocche ki kore bolbe bolo je eta list hocche tale list hote gele ki hote hobe na if h dash is an upper bound of gamma or our act upper bound niji then g must be less or equal to h dash for all g belongs to gamma this implies now since g is a subset of h dash so domain of g must be subset of domain of h dash for all g belongs to gamma right now taking the union of all these domains then they will be subset of so this will be subset of domain of h dash now what is this union this is w that means domain of h subset of domain of h dash right and you if you take h dash restrict over domain of h then 
Now, if you restrict this H dash to every domain of G, then they will give you G. So, that means this is H. Since if you take the restriction of H dash to domain of G, then this will be G because every G is less or equal to H dash, right? They can যেহেতু জি গুলো এইচ ড্যাশ এর থেকে ছোট অথবা সমান তার মানে এইচ ড্যাশ টাকে যদি ডোমেন অফ জি তে রেস্ট্রিক্ট করি তাহলে জি দিচ্ছে এবারে এইচ টা ডিফাইন করেছিলে কোথায় ইউনিয়ন অফ ডোমেন অফ জি তে তার মানে এইচ ড্যাশ কে যদি ডোমেন অফ এইচ এ তুমি রেস্ট্রিক্ট করো তাহলে কাকে দেবে এইচ কে দেবে ঠিক আছে সো देयरफॉर এইচ ইজ লেস অর इक्वल टू এইচ ড্যাশ এন্ড দিস প্রুভস दैट এইচ ইজ দা লিস্ট আপার বাউন্ড of gamma so by jones lemma so by jones lemma we can say that curly p this has a maximal element suppose say g star okay so curly p less or equal to has a maximum element g star now our claim is that what is our claim now what is g star g star is a maximal element of this that means what does it mean that is g star belongs to some z dash where z is a subspace of x with y is contained in z and and if you uh, yes and if you take the restriction of g star to y then it will give you f and norm of g star is equal to norm of x right okay so our claim is that if we can show that this domain of g star what that means z if z coincide with the whole space x then this g star will be your required extension of f right so our claim is that domain of g star equals with x now one may say that if not if not then what will happen then sorry then domain of g star must be not equal to x and then you can take one x not in the complement of domain of g star in x okay and then you can apply since this is a subspace of x proper subspace of x okay so and for this x not you can so there exist so by the above lemma so you can apply the above lemma here or you can get so there exist a g double star belongs to domain of g star plus this so you are considering this subspace generated by domain of g star plus this one dashed such that if you take the restriction of g double star to domain of g star then this will give you g star and the norms will be same this star which is equal to norm f right so therefore this g double star is eventually be in the curly p such that since this domain contains domain of g star and 
g double star restricted to this domain of g star is g star. So, therefore, you can say that g star is less or equal to g double star and since the domains are not equal. So, these maps are not same right. So, you have constructed a map which is for which g star is less or equal to g double star and g star not equal to g double star and this contradicts the maximality of contradicts the maximality of of g star okay and this contradiction proves the theorem so proves our claim that is domain of g star is x so therefore g star is our coveted linear bounded linear functional that is the extension of f that is an extension of f satisfying that if you take the restriction to y then it will be f and norm of g star is norm of f okay so this proves this completes the proof proof for the real case So, in the next class I will talk about the complex uh, the proof for the complex vector spaces. Okay. Now, I should stop here.